2012 European Council Summit meeting. There is a recovery taking place. The figures bear that out. But it is a recovery of the few, not the many. It is a two-tiered, two-speed recovery. Just as this year's budget in Ireland is a two-tiered budget. This year, our government were in a position to deliver a neutral budget for the first time in seven years. No extra deficit reduction measures were needed. They could have introduced a budget that would have eased the burden on the vast majority of people. A budget that would stimulate the domestic economy and start the renewal of public services. But instead, they continued to favour the most well-off in Irish society. Tax cuts that benefit the better off, while the, left are left, the, the rest are left to rot. Sinn Féin believes that a better, fairer, more equal and prosperous Ireland is possible. But that cannot be achieved on the basis of the policies our government is following. Yes, the Troika are happy with what our government has announced. Because this brand of Milton Friedman's economics is the common agenda across all of the day. I'm very conscious that the impact of austerity on people in Portugal and Greece in particular has been probably even more cruel than in Ireland and in other other countries. But Irish people are suffering unnecessarily when Irish society continues to privilege, to privilege the few over the many. It will continue as a society for the elites and not for citizens. Poverty, homelessness, health and education inequalities, unemployment and emigration will still be the daily reality for tens of thousands of people. After almost four years of government, there are 28,000 less young people in employment in Ireland than when they took office. In the first six months of this year, they only created 5,500 less new jobs. And a massive 374,800 people are still stuck on the road. Over 200 people, many young, continue to emigrate every single day in search of work and a better future. One in seven working people in Ireland are living at risk of poverty. One in four people live in a jobless household. And these are the families that our government expects to pay water charges. There is no recovery for the families with only €8.75 left each week after the essential bills are paid. And at a time when children are being forced to sleep in cars, tents, hotel beds or family floors because of a lack of investment in housing, our government chooses to cut the top rate of tax to benefit the wealthy. Here we have the neoliberal and private austerity policies still being held up, even though our government this year had a chance to give something back to its most needy citizens. Quite clearly, an end to austerity uh, does not mean an end to austerity policies. Sinn Féin this year again put forward a fully cost alternative budget, showing a fairer and more sustainable way of meeting the state's fiscal targets. Our alternative budget provisions to put 800 million euros back into the pockets of ordinary workers through the abolition of the property tax and water charges. In our proposal for 2015, we focused on raising the living standards of the most vulnerable, increasing investment in the disability services, reversing our crisis in frontline healthcare, and making education more affordable. We sought to stem the tide of youth emigration. Our proposal was a budget that would help rebuild our economy, renew our society, and repair our communities within the deficit targets dictated by tribal policy. Could not be starker. When the government recently launched their plans 
to commemorate the 1916 Rising in the GPO in Dublin, where the main battle was fought with the force of the British Empire outside. The government of the day today had to contend with the noise of angry water charge protesters drowning out their empty festivities.
economic crisis, a social crisis, a political crisis. Poor design, bad policies, and incompetent leadership are to blame. And Big Phil is certainly a good example of that. The result has been an assault of the living standards of low and income families across Europe. The demonization of those unable to find work and dependent on social welfare, and the asset stripping of public services and utilities on which many of us rely. We must continue to provide alternative and better leadership. To make matters worse, political elites in Europe want to centralise more power into the EU institutions. They claim that this is the only way to resolve the crisis. We must use our strength and mandate to call a halt to the failed policies of the Brussels Consensus. Now, 